So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with this. Um, so in, I prepared a references list, which is at the end of this presentation. However, this is an actual command that you can enter into your terminal, into your bash shell, and it gives you a really good introduction. So it's something to go look back into. So what will we be talking about today? We will talk about what is GNU Linux, what is a shell, we will chat a bit about the file system, we will chat a bit about IO redirection and searching, and we will also have, um, I'll show some miscellaneous <coughs> commands that I think would be useful during the Casper tutorials. And then the references that I talked to you guys about in the start. Okay, so what is GNU Linux? Um, GNU Linux is a free and open source operating system. Um, and I won't go too much into the history, but GNU and Linux actually started out as two separate projects. GNU started in the early 1980s, and it is a recursive acronym for GNU is not Unix. Um, Linux started in the early 1990s, and it is a separate project from the GNU project. Then some smart people figured out that they could put these two together to form a free and open source operating system. And that is where GNU Linux operating system comes from. So Linux is the kernel and GNU is the software packages that surrounds the kernel that makes the complete operating system. Many different Linux distributions exist, many of which are graphical distributions, which are Ubuntu as an example, which is what um, I make use of, but you also get Debian, you also get GNOME and RHEL and many other flavors. Oh, and these are the mascots, so for GNU and Linux. So, Secondly, the thing that I want to discuss a bit is what is a shell? So when you look over here, this is a picture that I took from learning the bash shell. You can see that the, well, this is actually from the Unix operating system, but imagine that that is the Linux kernel and the shell wraps around the Linux kernel. Um, and Basically each, and this is what the, the bash shell looks like. So this is literally a screenshot that I took of my bash shell when I created these slides. Um, all the commands is when you enter text into your terminal, it takes the form of a command and then options and then the arguments. So echo for example, is a command, and over here I passed it the shell argument, and then it will tell me that I am using the bin bash shell. You get different types of shells. You get sh, which was the shell that bash is based on, so bash is the born again shell. Um, and then there's three things that happens when you invoke a process, three file descriptors that gets created. So there's standard input, and then standard output, and then also standard error. So when you give a command an argument which it doesn't like, which I did over here with my ls command, it bombs out and tells me that you cannot access some <laughs> because that file doesn't exist. So this is like one of the first things to keep in mind is to use the tab key um, because you, then you don't have to type out so much. So when you give the command and then the option and then the argument and then you use the tab key, it will auto-complete what that is. And this is what the output looks like. The shell is a... Um, the shell has environment variables, and you get shell variables, 
And then if you want to make your shell variables available to your environment variables, you need to export that shell variable. So next up, I will talk a little bit about the file system of the GNU Linux operating system. At the very top of the file structure, you have root, which is a, or you could maybe say at the bottom of the file structure, you have the root um, directory. So folders are equivalent to directories. Um, you can move around using the change directory command. Uh, period, period takes you to the parent directory of which you originated from. The dash, when you cd dash, it takes you to the previous directory that you came from. And tilde is important because that takes you back to your home directory. If you, at any point in time you want to know where you are, you can print working directory and that will tell you the in um, absolute path of where you are located. So this is just a little diagram that I made to show some of the directory structures starting from root because in a GNU Linux system, everything is treated as a file. Even the directories are treated as files. So you've got home and dev and bin in the root directory and under home you could have a Varese directory and under Varese you can have like a readme.txt file. So I'll say a little bit about permissions next and chmod is the command that you can use in order to change the permissions of a file. And just over here I want to show that, let's just analyze this statement over here. So touch demo is just a command to create the file demo and then semicolon to not print that to output to not print that to standard output and then ls-l demo would then print to the output. So chmod has user group and other and then you can add or subtract read write and or executable permissions for the file demo. So, but you can also do this numerically, and you guys can go try this at home, that these commands and this numeric um, does the same thing. Uh, you can look at read, write, and there's a dash, read, write, dash, read, dash, dash. So for when I created this file, it gave read and write permissions for the user, which is Varese, read and write permissions for the group, which in this case is also Varese, and then only read permissions for other people using the GNU Unix operating system. One thing that I missed on a previous slide, which I think is a good point to mention now, is, is that GNU Linux is a multi-user system, so it's not that only one person can log in, multiple people can log in. So that is why at this point you can set the permission for what other people can do with this file. So if you wanted to take away writing permission for the user, I don't know why you would want to take, do that, <laughs> but if you, and you want to create executables for others, then you can go ahead and do that using the chmod command and you can verify that it's now an executable by looking at this, um, well firstly the color changed, so it's an executable, but then the Varese, the user, would no longer be able to execute this file because we took away the, those rights. If you have an executable, you can run that executable by dot forward slash demo. So next thing, I'd like to talk a bit about um, the more things that you can do with files. You can make a directory using mkdir. You can remove files using rm. You can copy from the source to the destination using cp. You can rename files using mv 
which is move, so it's also source to destination. You can print a standard output, which you guys have already seen in the previous slides that I've been using that. And then diff, diff points, diff prints out the difference between two files. Um, I'd like to say a little bit about wildcards. The question mark wildcard is for one character, and then the asterisk is for any, and then over here is a set. So this is M or N. The bash does the wildcard expansion before it passes the arguments. So when you do something like this, it first expands file system to, well, I don't have it on the slide, but it expands it to file system with an M because that's what the file was actually called. And it's also case sensitive. So notice that you can have all capitalized file system and all small cases file system. So when I created this slide, what I did is, is I opened up that file system. I deleted the first line. And I did this so that we can look at what's the difference between file system and file system. And diff is the command that can be used, or the program that can be used in order to do this. So it tells us that um, make a directory, which is the first line, was deleted. Then you also get brace expansion. So brace expansion uh, then prints out A to C. OK, redirection. Um, I'll talk briefly about this. <laughs> OK. I redirection and searching. So the greater than symbol is um, output redirection, and the smaller than symbol is um, input redirection. So output redirection means that don't print this to the output, print it to book. Input redirection means don't, cat, don't take your input from the standard input, which is normally your keyboard, take it from book. But why does it still print it out? <laughs> because cat is a command that prints to standard out. So what this command actually does is it takes its in, this redirection symbol tells cat to take its input from book, but then still do its thing, which is to print out whatever is in book. And then if you take that command and redirect that output to book copy, then you can actually make a copy of it. So cat copy book is the exact copy of that. So that's just to give you some background for what input and output redirection is, but more something that um, I use very often is the pipe. And this is also where you can see the power of the GNU Linux system is, is that all of the programs were written to be self-contained. And then you can use the pipe redirection to take the output of one program and redirect it to the input of the other program. So in this case, cat is the first program and you cat firmware.fpg, and firm, firmware.fpg is a file type which you guys will get familiar with later during the week, um, especially tomorrow. So if you cat firmware.fpg, you pipe that to grep, which is a command that searches for a specific string for system, if you want to see what the system clock counter, for example, looks like, then it prints out all, and you can see it's here in red, all the occurrences in the output of cat firmware.fpg where sysclock is, is printed out. And then you can go further and pipe, and if you want like a specific field, then you can use the program called cut, and you can pass it, you can tell it like, okay, I'm use the delimiter, the, the delimiter needs to be space, and I'm interested in field number three. So what it will do is, is it would look for sys clock where the field is number three. So it will look one, so it will count one, two, three. So that would be the output. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, 
Yes. So when we take uh, writing permission of a file from user, can that user add uh, writing permission to the same file? So if the user took away its writing permission, whether they can write to that file? Uh, if they can uh, take their permission back. Yes, if yes, they, they can. can. If yeah. If yeah, if they're the owner of the file, um, yeah. Okay. So if if that didn't change. Okay, yeah. Um, so I think I've got about five more minutes. You do. Okay, so well, I'll fine. quickly fine. run through these commands. Um, LN is a program to make links between files, and in the Casper tutorials, I think you guys will need to make some symbolic links. PS is a program to um, investigate the processes that are happening on your system. The way that I like to use it is PAS-FAX, which actually shows you, so FAX would be the options that's passed along with, that's passed to PS the command. And it will show you the tree directory of all the processes that is happening on your system and you can pipe that and grip for certain processes. And then um, kill, is a command that sends a signal to a specific process and kill dash nine, I think dash nine is the one that is the signal that terminates that process. So if you use kill dash nine with the process ID which you can get from PS, then that process can be terminated. Apt-get is the advanced package tool which can be used in order to install packages. Sudo is when you use and execute a command as another user. Su is to switch user. And in the tutorials, you guys will make use of the command ssh, which is a remote login program. So how you use ssh is ssh, your username, at your IP address. And then to transfer files between machines, you can use SCP, which is the remote file copying program. And if you guys don't um, want to look at my slides again, that's fine, because like all of these is obtained from the manual pages. So if you go man ln in your bash terminal, you will see the first line is probably make links between files. Then a warning is um, don't ever use, say rm-rf root because that will recursively remove your root directory. And um, I would like to ask a question. So how come I could execute this command and not have my whole file system removed? It was common. <laughs> yeah. And then um, a few tricks is when you press Control and R, and then start typing out a certain command that you know you did before, then it will do a recursive search, and then it can print out that same file again. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the rm-rf slash was a comment? Y yes, because, okay. because of this hash. Because of the hash. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, so, hash, so, so hash, I actually did hash. execute this command. Um, yeah. And but nothing like happened because I you, you commented it, it out. Comment, yeah. yes. But in addition to that, you, you you weren't a super user when you executed the command, or at least you weren't not logged on as root. Because if you were, that's actually pretty confusing. Because the pound is a comment, and if you made yourself super user, the dollar prompt would be oh. replaced by a pound as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. that is true. Um, that is true. As I, I, I guess maybe you, you're a super user, your regular login on your computer makes you have administrative privileges. So yes. Thus the rmf-rf slash would have wiped your entire hard drive. I think like I would need to be... If you, if you, if you should do it would, but uh, 
uh, yeah. not unless you explicitly do it. Uh, unless you sued it, right. So, yeah. so anyway, there's another layer of protection. Even yes. if it wasn't a comment, yeah. you would still have I just thought you have that in there in any case yeah. because there are a lot of pranksters online. I mean, the, the, layer of, the layer of protection is there, but your operating system you could reinstall. Your work that you've done, you can't reinstall from the engine. So, so you can still do a lot of damage if you do that as a normal user. Oh, oh, I see. It would, it, it would, it wouldn't just crash and say you, you can't do this. It, it, would, it, would, it would, skip files that you don't have permission to delete. It would throw a lot of warnings and, and say error that you don't have permission to do this, but it would happily delete your home directory. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that. Uh, you, <laughs> you, 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 you mentioned uh, James mentioned sudo. Maybe you could tell people what sudo is. But, um, yeah. It's over there already. So um, okay. I mean. It's, yeah, it's a, to execute a command as another, as another user. user. So if you go sudo su, then you can actually, and you've got like root privileges, and you can become another that. User. Yeah. yeah. On but your but, but uh, isn't the su in sudo super user? So yeah, it's switch user. Oh, it's switch user, not super user. Okay. Uh, how interesting. But without, uh, so if Verisa and I both have a login, I could s sudo Verisa and execute a command as her, provided that I know her password. Oh, password. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in, in your, in your login, <laughs> but without, but without uh, explicitly saying another user, it assumes that you want to do it as root. As root. Oh, gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, that that is the end of my talk. Like the next slide is like all the references. So if anybody has any questions, um, I think the twenty minutes are up. But yeah, it's a perfect timing. Actually, okay. thank you very much.